everyone. It's Andy with the Reverb Tome Report. And that was just a little brief history of uh, reverb in general, from analog spring to modern plate in digital form, and even something like the Rooms, which gives you a lo-fi and uh, you know something with like a filter or ring mod in the tails of the reverb. So this series is all about analog versus digital. And the funny thing about reverb is that you really only have a few categories in the analog side, and that's spring, studio plate, and chamber reverb. And the last two, I have a special surprise where we're gonna involve Steve Albini's electrical audio studio to get our sounds. So let's start off with spring reverb first. You can't beat a simple spring to do the job for most guitar styles, and Fender has been making this possible since the 60s, whether that was with an outboard piece of gear or right inside the amplifier. I'll start with my trusty Deluxe Reverb reissue, then compare it to one of Surfy Bear's numerous spring tank offerings, the compact version. Finally, for the digital example, I'll use Source Audio's True Spring pedal, which stumped a lot of folks in our blind test against the Deluxe Reverb a while back. So with Spring, you could probably tell that even the two analog examples were really different because they were located in different spots in the signal chain. And so that really changes the drip and the attack. And especially if you have a dirty amplifier, it really changes the whole dynamics of everything. And of course, the digital has a lot of advantages on that source audio and other modern Spring emulations, like from Strymon. You have a lot of control over the decay time as well as the tone and even the amount of virtual springs in that unit. <laughs> Next up is Plate Reverb, which has been a studio favorite since the late 50s with the EMT-140. Plate Reverb has a smooth decay and brighter sound that makes it a perfect fit for most instruments. I mentioned that we had some help from Electrical Audio in Chicago, so thanks everyone who was uh, involved in that process. Basically, I sent my dry, mic'd up amp to the studio and they were able to run it through their echo plate which is a genuine analog plate reverb from the late 60s and they were able to send me the 100 percent wet signal which meant i could have full control over the overall wet dry mix to better match with the alexander pedals space force plate mode and a plug-in from universal audio their pure plate which goes after the emt plate <laughs> Thank you. 
Now let's talk natural spaces. Again, we had help from Electrical Audio on this one where I sent my dry signal and they pumped it out of their uh, Studio A monitors and put some omnidirectional condenser mics in their live room, which is called Center Field. And it's a, a great room for you know tracking anything from drums to guitars if you want some extra depth. And again, I have the 100% wet signal, which I could mix with the dry to match it up with the other examples. And those other examples in the digital side are a room reverb from Keeley's Hydra pedal. And this is a really nice high quality DSP chip in this pedal. And we just went basic room setting here, kind of a medium length, no modulation. And the other example here in the digital realm is the Capital Chambers from Universal Audio. This plugin uses UA's dynamic room modeling to recreate those world famous echo chambers found 30 feet below Capitol Studios. And these were actually designed by Les Paul in the mid 50s. <laughs> One advantage of using post effects like a plate reverb or a chamber is that you could actually get a stereo signal out of a mono source. So I just sent the a mono signal with one mic of the amplifier and they sent it back in stereo because you could actually have a stereo coming out of the plate reverb and of course two microphones in the uh, center field live room. Modern digital pedals have stereo outputs but that means you have to have two amplifiers uh, basically double your normal recording rig. You have a lot of pros and cons on each side. Of course, you know, the pro of digital is that it's really compact. You have a lot of options, but really, you know, playing through that uh, plate reverb virtually, of course, uh, was a real thrill. And thanks again for Electrical Audio in Chicago for helping us out with this video. And let us know in the comments what you thought, and I'll see you for another analog versus digital comparison. Thanks for watching.